you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Matthew 18, 21, that's the only place you have to turn to today. I'm telling you, I just want to tell you, I am so scared. I have never done this. Don't know if I'll ever do it again. <laughs> I don't know how Delbert does it every week. I really don't. I told him this morning, I don't know how you do it. It never leaves your mind. It's such an awesome responsibility. But I want to tell you, if, if this is your first time here today, this is my first time here today. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel your pain. And I just want to encourage you to please, please, please come back again. You owe it to yourself for Pastor Delbert, to hear Pastor Delbert preach, because he's really good. <laughs> he's my favorite preacher. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I'm happy you're here, but I just want to express to the others how happy I am that you're here and how much your love and your faithfulness means to me and my family. I, c I could never express that. Now I want to explain the video. We were sitting on the sofa and it was just Max and Jack and me and we were sitting there and um, Ma Jack was telling me everything before it happened. So I was aware of where this movie was going. And so it came to the part where we knew the grandpa was going to forgive this game maker that had crippled him. And he had been crippled for 30 years. And so right before he says that, Jack looks at me and says, now mama, he shouldn't forgive him. He's a bad man. And so I take those opportunities to give little mini sermons to them. And so I said, oh, yeah, Jack, we always forgive. We always forgive because it's the greatest power that we have. It's the most like God. It's the most like Jesus. It's the closest to that that we come. And I said, and you know what? And I always say this when I, when I tell them about something good they do. I, I always tell them it makes Jesus happy. And so he just kind of looked at me and said, yeah. <laughs> but he was not convinced that this man should forgive the game maker. So that's, I believe that is probably when the Lord dropped this message into my heart and it's called the miracle of forgiveness. And we've been learning about miracles for the last few weeks, so I thought we'll just flow along with that. I want you to know that everyone here has probably been on the receiving or the giving end of this miracle. You've all experienced it in one way or the other. I want you to know that God saved the world by forgiving it. And just like I told Jack, when we do that, we come the closest to being like God, the closest to the divine nature of God that we'll ever come is when we do that. We create a new beginning for people when we forgive them. Someone is imprisoned by their own mistakes of judgment their own thoughtful, thoughtless actions toward us. They have injured us and hurt us. And when we forgive, we create a new beginning out of a past of pain for them. And especially for us, when we forgive, we, give, we prepare a way of healing for our future. This is healing for a future that had no possibility in it for anything other than pain and sickness and hurt and defeat. When you're walking in unforgiveness, you are walking a defeated, miserable life. You can only go so far, and you are just paralyzed from going any farther. When you forgive, God heals the hurt you never deserved. You never deserved. A lot of times, things will happen to us, and we'll say, why did that happen? I didn't deserve this. I did not deserve this. And... And God, if you will forgive that person, he'll do a miracle in your life, and you will walk around in more freedom than you've ever experienced. Uh, there's several ways that experience comes. Sometimes it comes simply, you just wake up one day and you, you realize you've forgiven that person. You may, I don't know if you've experienced this, I experienced this, you may go to Walmart or Kmart or Bilo, and you run into somebody that's hurt you so terribly, betrayed you so terribly, and you put on your nice religious face and you say, well, hi, how you doing? Good to see you. But inside, you're so full of bitterness and you're so 
full of anger and, and anxious, just anxious inside. But then you, through a life of maybe weeks or months or years of prayer and of uh, reading the Word, it miraculously washes your heart. And then that week or month or year that you run into that same person, you feel a physical feeling of lightness and you know that God has worked a miracle of forgiveness in your heart. Right. You know that. And, and so it just happens sometimes. Um, I want you to understand something, that forgiveness is not denying that there was a wrong done to you. It doesn't mean that you're going to have all these fuzzy feelings. It means just the opposite. It's recognizing a genuine hurt and then having a truly sincere desire to right that wrong and to do something about it, to reconcile any damage that was done. I've heard people say, well, I'll forgive them when they ask me. Now, this is just me. I don't know that I could really give you scripture for this, but I think that is as far from the truth as you'll ever get. That is a lie of the enemy. I personally have forgiven people many, many people, <laughs> and many, many, many times I've walked in forgiveness when no one has even, when this person has never even accepted the responsibility for what they've done. So there's times when, where even though the offense is not even acknowledged, we walk in forgiveness because it's the best thing for us. It's just the best thing for us. And whether the, I've even walked in forgiveness to people who are continually, continuing to hurt me or persecute my family or do things that just devastate me. I continually walk in forgiveness to them. Eternity may pass and they may never ask forgiveness, but I choose to forgive. Um, that's a miracle. <laughs> Don't you think that's a miracle? Um, and then there's another way, the best way. And there may be more ways, but I know three ways. Three ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's when forgiveness and repentance meet there's a miracle that takes place in such a powerful way when repentance and forgiveness meet that the most hopeless of relationships the most hopeless of relationships can be reconciled and we see this over and over and over again in marriages it seems that there'll be terrible abuse in the relationship, in the marriage. There'll be horrible betrayal, and they'll allow the Lord to work in their lives, and you see forgiveness, and you see uh, repentance meet, and a miracle takes place. An absolute miracle takes place, and hopelessness gives way. Hopelessness gives way to the miracle of God, and forgiveness gives way and to the miracle of God, and restoration occurs. And that marriage, that marriage is stronger than it ever was. Right. Years and years and years ago, because <laughs> I'm so old, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I had a dear, dear friend, and she did something. I'll be back. Um, that absolutely devastated me. She did something that this is, you know, I shared everything that I thought and felt with her. And I did not deserve this. I did nothing but love her and accept her. And it absolutely, absolutely devastated me, and I'm not going to tell you what she did because that's between her and me. That's just between us. The world doesn't have to know. And um, if I did tell you, you'd probably, every single one of you, be like Jack. You'd <laughs> say, you should forgive her. You know, that's crazy. You are an absolute idiot. Don't, you should never forgive that. That's just too terrible. 
But, like Pastor Delbert has been preaching on do what Jesus said do, you know, the water was turned into wine because, we, because Mary said do what he says do. Well, I was reading one morning, and it's about forgiveness, and so I knew in my heart I had to go to her that day. And I want you to know that when I walked up to that door and she saw me, she looked like the game maker, looked at Grandpa. She did not know what I was going to do. She looked at my hands to see if I had something in them. Because <laughs> I was little, and <laughs> if I was going to get her, I was going to have to have some help, like a baseball bat or something. And uh, so she didn't know what I was going to do, but what I was going to do that day was forgive her. And I want you to know that that day repentance, genuine repentance, and genuine forgiveness met. And we have the most wonderful relationship. We have the closest relationship. And let me tell you, if you knew the whole story, you'd know that forgiveness is a miracle. Forgiveness is a miracle. And it can happen. And I think God wants to do that miracle in your life today. Matthew 18, 21 says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? <laughs> you know, it was seven times. Is that enough? And in my uh, New Living Translation, it says, No! With a big exclamation point. Jesus replied, No. Seventy times seven. Now, what was Jesus saying? Was he saying... 490 times, is that right? <laughs> Seven times. Um, <laughs> that was, that, I was actually the best in math. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but what Jesus is saying is there's no limits. Don't put any limits on forgiveness. There's no even score to forgiveness. You know, you tell me, if you've done something to somebody, how, mu how much is too much forgiveness? And that's what Jesus said. You know, you don't put a limit on it. You don't keep score there. Because unforgiveness can dominate the rest of your life. And some of you have every right. I know some of you. And I know that I don't know about some things, but I know people. And so I know that some of you have every right to be bitter and angry and to to be unforgiving toward people and toward situations. But I want you to know God wants to replace those feelings of hate and that resentment, that disappointment and that bitterness. And he wants to replace it with freedom and victory. He doesn't want you to be a victim anymore. He wants you to be a victor. I got that from Joel Osteen. <laughs> um, He's another one of my favorite preachers. And I want you to know I'm not an expert at this. I, I struggle with this every single day of my life. When you're in ministry, you just you hear so much bad that's said about you, so much more of that than you hear the good. And so you just have to learn. And after almost 20 years, I think I'm getting pretty good at it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm no expert, but I'm getting good. But I'm... Um, but I am I'm just like you, and I've questioned God. And I've questioned his love for me, and I've questioned his, um, his thinking, his wisdom. Sometimes, you know, have you heard that song, What Was I Thinking? I go, what were you thinking? You know, how, how did you let this happen? You see it, you know everything. How, how did you let this happen? <laughs> and uh, I've had to forgive God. And I believe there's people here today that you need to forgive God. Some of you, your husband or your wife has walked down on you or you've suffered horrible abuse. Some physical, some sexual abuse. Some of you have been mistreated and overlooked on your jobs when you know you were the best. You know you were the best, the best pick. And somebody else got promoted, not you. You've been betrayed in relationships. You felt like God, why didn't you stop it? 
You know, you could stop it. Why didn't you stop it? And so I was in one of those, God, why don't you stop this, about eight years ago in particular. And I was questioning God about people, about him allowing people to hurt me, and especially allowing people to hurt my family. Now, you want to get me mad? You hurt my family. And I am one tough chick. <laughs> you have... <laughs> You have met your match if you hurt my family. And so I was asking God, why are you letting them get away with this is actually what I was saying. Why don't you just do something horrible to them to make them stop? Give them or either put them on a boat and send them to China. I don't care what you do. Just stop it. I don't understand. And God spoke to me so clearly, so clearly. And he said, Judy... You know, I am in control, but I am not a controller. And so that is just, that was such a valuable truth to me that if you've ever sat in a counseling session with me, that I have, to, and you have asked me, why, why is God letting this happen? Then I am giving you a truth that will set you free. He's not doing it. He's not going to control that person, and he's not going to control me. He doesn't make me serve him, and he doesn't make me come to church, and he doesn't make me pay my tithes, and he doesn't make me love you, and he doesn't make me love my family. He doesn't make me do one single thing. And if you're honest, he doesn't make you do one single thing. And so what would make you think that he's going to make someone else do it, do something? He's going to control their actions so your life can just be perfect. He's not going to do it. But what he's going to do is take care of you. And he's going to work it out for your good. Right. He is going to take care. He knows. And he, you know, he says, vengeance is mine. Right. And let me tell you, he can do it the very best way. Oh, yeah. he, he is the expert. Okay? So... So the good news is God's in control. He knows how you feel. He knows how you're hurting, and he sees it all, and that should make you happy. So God wants to do a miracle today. He wants you to look at the situation. Like Grandpa in the movie. And some of you, some of you are not crippled in the physical. You walk around every day. You run. But your spirit and your soul and, and your um, emotions are crippled. And some of you, like Grandpa, have been crippled for 30 years or more. You've carried this around for a really, really long time. And just like Grandpa, you've missed out on a lot because of, of your unforgiveness and because of, of what somebody did to you and how they made you feel inferior and how you may have been President of the United States, but your father made you feel like you were nothing. I just got to be patient because God's doing this. <laughs> it's not in my notes. <laughs> and you missed out on a lot, a lot of happy moments. And maybe you're a woman and you could have been just the best little old wife you could have ever been. And you could have given yourself to your husband and, and all the little ways that a wife gives herself to her husband. <laughs> And your life could have been so happy, but instead, something happened to you when you were a little girl. And that's just not possible. You know, you think you've dealt with it. You think you've dealt with it a long time ago, but it's just like toxic waste. You've just buried it. You've buried it deep inside. And every now and then, it just creeps up. It comes to the surface, and it messes you up. 
And God wants to heal you of that today. He wants to do a miracle in your life by just letting you once and for all forgive that situation. Some of you think your whole life would have been different if only this hadn't happened or if only that hadn't happened. If only I hadn't have been held back. My whole life, my whole life would have been different. I'd probably be a millionaire, <laughs> you know, if this hadn't happened to me. God wants you to let that go today. And he wants to, he wants to ensure your future for success because your unforgiveness has trapped you in the past and it's paralyzed your future. God wants to release the suffering of the past and help you see like Grandpa had made you stronger and it made you more compassionate and it made you more spiritual because when you're walking in forgiveness and hurt and pain, you reach out to God more than ever. So it definitely makes you more spiritual. And God wants to turn your scars into stars that help people, that lead people, that guide people to his kingdom. Because you can't, in the natural, you can't forgive the things that have happened to you. But through God, miraculously, that can happen. My challenges have done one major thing for me, one really major thing for me. They have caused me to see that I can trust in God. I can count on God. Many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he has delivered me out of every single one, and he will deliver you out of every single one. Uh, some of my major miracles have come through forgiveness. It seems like you just get bogged down in unforgiveness, and, and even in the church, it doesn't go anywhere. It just spins its wheels, and then you forgive something, and it just takes off again. I've seen that happen over and over and over in my life, in Delbert's life, in Lance's life. You know, in the ministry, you really have to walk in what I'm talking about. You have to have a miracle every day. So, you know, how is it possible you do what he said to do? He said to forgive, and he said to forgive a lot. He said don't limit it, don't keep score. So you do what he said do, and then you use something, if you've been here, another point was, you use something that's in your own house. You know, and in this situation, you use something that's in this house. You use the power of the Holy Spirit the anointing, Christ within you, the strength, you have it inside of you to do it, and God wants you to do it. And a miracle will happen. It will just happen in your life. So how do you forgive? How do you forgive betrayal? How do you forgive abuse? How do you forgive deliberate attacks against your family? Deliberate attacks against your ministry. Deliberate attacks against yourself. <laughs> How do you forgive that husband or that wife that walked down on you and didn't even try to do things that would reconcile your relationship? Not just walked down on you, but walked down on, you know, four or five kids. Yeah, walked down on a life. A life that you had together built. And just one day he just walks out. How do you forgive that? That friend that betrayed you. And I could go on and on, but what I want you to do is fill in the blank. How do I forgive your situation? So I want you to know how you forgive it. It's a miracle. It's a sight to see. <laughs> oh, but when he touches me, are you... Way down deep in your soul, he'll get a hold of you and he won't let go. And then if you stumble and if you fall, he's always there to catch you because it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle to me, but he wants to do it. And I believe today, I've seen your faces and so I know this has touched some of you. And I want you to know that today, God wants to do a miracle for you and it's going to change the direction of your whole life. So, y'all be coming. <laughs> um, 
unlike the movie, God's not going to give you just 10 seconds. <laughs> Y'all remember the grandpa said, said, you got 10 seconds? He'll give you as long as it takes. Um, some of you today, you, you thought you've forgiven. And um, we're going to pray for everybody in just a minute. And it, whatever your need, whatever your need, I want you to come down. You know, whatever you need prayer for. We, we long to pray and agree with you. But some of you, it's like, it's like that toxic waste. You think you've forgiven. But then every now and then, you did everything you knew to forgive, but every now and then it just creeps back up because you don't, really, you don't realize it's a miracle. You think it's something you've got to do. And let me tell you that sometimes in forgiveness, most times in forgiveness, there's not a recon reconciliation of relationship. It doesn't mean you've got to start going to Burger King with them. That's not what it means. Now, sometimes it is. It's, it's, a, it's a fabulous miracle. It's a precious thing. But those are the far and in-between times when repentance and forgiveness meet. But some of you are like that and you think you've forgiven, but you haven't. And God wants to work a miracle in your life today. Um, I think a lot of you need to forgive God. You know, you've tried so many things and he seems like he just hasn't come through for you. But in particular, when I was uh, preparing this, I felt, I really feel like today there's a father here. And you need to forgive what, I, it's a child, I know it's a child, but I think it's a daughter. And what the Lord showed me is that this daughter, you raised her to serve God, and you raised her the best, the very best way you can, and now she's as far from God as she could be. And you are so hurt and disappointed with that. And it has just bound you up, and it has just bound her up. And you can't be what God wants you to be, in the kingdom and she can't be what God wants her to be in the kingdom because of that unforgiveness and because just because of that wall that's there and so today you know if that's you I hope you come down and I hope you surrender that to God and I hope today God does a miracle of forgiveness in your hearts mm -hmm. Just be coming if you need prayer.